right? It's Tuesday, and that means one thing and one thing only. It's time for Math Tuesday. <laughs> Math Tuesday. It's Math Tuesday um, here on Texas Football Today. <laughs> math Tuesday. It's Math Tuesday. <laughs> um, Amazing. We are uh, going to talk a little bit about what we're going to be doing this weekend. So tomorrow we've got a show. We're going to do a show here on Texas Football Today. And then we're going to pack up the studio. Yeah. And then we're going to get in the car. And we're going to drive to College Station. Like we do around these points. Drive to College Station to talk about and go to attend the state seven on seven tournament down there in beautiful Aggie Land. Uh, gonna be, it's going on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Of course, you can stream for free a number of the games uh, on TexanLive.com. Thanks to our friends at the Ar Texas Army National Guard. And I think I've told this story befo before, but I am a relative neophyte. When it comes to seven on seven, I was pretty skeptical about seven on seven. Yeah. Uh, for a long time, for really for the first probably half of my tenure here at Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Yeah. And well, in a name like underwear football, kind of yeah, people yeah. throw that out, you know. Um, and you know it's two hand touch. It's like okay, I'm a believer that football tends to be one in the trenches, and yeah. there's obviously none of that. Uh, so I was thinking, okay, I could kind of take it or leave it. It was Matt Stepp who really kind of brought me along to it and said, no, there's more to learn here. You just kind of got to know what you're looking for. Right. Don't go in there and necessarily look for um, who's winning and who's losing necessarily, or mm -hmm. but but kind of read between the lines a little bit and got to get your eye. It's an opportunity to get your eyes on some players. And so I've come around on states on, on seven on seven, and the state seven on seven tournament down there in College Station is a big event. Uh, of course, that's why we'll be streaming it live on TexanLive.com. But the real question that I think we get every single year is about what does it mean? Like, why yep. does it matter? What does it mean? Because, of course, everyone's like, well, being good at 7-on-7, seven seven, what's that, you know, what's it mm -hmm. even mean for you in the fall? Because the fall is what matters. Right. Uh, if if Hebron won the Division I 7-on-7 um, seven seven tournament last year, mm -hmm. right? If you gave Hebron the opportunity to trade that seven on seven title in for a UIL state championship, they in, wouldn't even in blink. December, like, that's not a that's not a conversation. Mm -hmm. It's just a yes. yes. It's just a yes. Um, so it's not some sort of replacement, and it's not some sort of you know meaning more than than than, uh, than mm -hmm. the fall season. But what it does is gives us an opportunity to get some eyes on some teams. And so really, the question that we have every single year is. What are we looking at and what can we how can we use this to project forward into the fall? Now I know what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I know I want to see, you know, which defenses look like they're playing cohesive defense. I know I want to see which quarterbacks have really grown up. I want to see wh who has weapons. Yeah. Uh what you kind wanna, of Yeah, you want to talk about a good place to evaluate defensive backs? Right. 7 on 7 is yes. underratedly good for that. For sure. Things like that. Those are things I'm looking for. But ultimately the the question is is it predictive? of what we're going to see in the fall. Mm -hmm. Is it predictive of that? And so I did what I normally do on Math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. And I dove into the numbers, okay? Here is the overarching... I've got a piece up on TexasFootball.com right now. Here's the overarching um, thesis statement, okay? Okay. Winning at 7-on-7 seven seven has a high but not perfect correlation to winning during the Texas high school football season. That feels right. Okay. There is a correlation between being good at 7-on-7 seven seven and being good in the fall. So here's what I mean by that. And we're going to take the last three years as an ex as an example. because Or last three. It's the last four years, but it's the last three tournaments. Okay. 2021, 2019, and 2018. There wasn't a tournament in 2020 for Correct. reasons you can probably imagine. <laughs> okay. So... There have been, if you didn't know, that there are three divisions in 7-on-7. Seven seven. There's Division One, which is 6A, 5A, and large private schools. Mm -hmm. There is Division Two, which is 4A, 3A Division One, and small private schools. And then it is Division Three, which is 3A Division Two and below. So, like, if you're a six-man school, if you want to play 7-on-7, seven seven, put an extra guy on the field, you could. There are no six-man teams in, in this year's tournament. But it's all broken down. As a result, there are three championship games every year. Yes. And so you have six finalists every year, mm -hmm. which means over the course, follow me on this math, over the course of the last three tournaments, we have 18 finalists. Yes. Right? You with me so far? Yes. Okay. 
18 finalists, okay? Those 18 finalists, when the fall season rolled around. Mm -hmm. Of the same year. Of that same year. Corresponding year. For example, last year, uh, Hebron beat Lake Travis. Yes. So 2021 season for Hebron and Lake Travis is what we're talking about. The season that follows their their seven-on-seven success. Mm -hmm. Every single one of them, all 18 of them, were playoff teams. Okay? That's good. 15 of the 18 won at least one playoff game. That's 15 of the 18. And one of those, by the way, was Childress. Childress was mm-hmm. a was a, uh, a uh, finalist last year in Division Three. You may remember they lost in the um, they lost in the first round, rather in, in a huge upset mm-hmm. last year. So that is on the other side of this. Furthermore, 17 of the 18 seven on seven finalists finished with a winning record. The only exception was that Hebron team from last year, which went five and six, five and five made the playoffs, lost in the first round. Here's the one that really gets to me, and the one that really speaks to me. The 18 seven-on-seven finalists okay. averaged 10.5 wins. Poof. They averaged 10.5 wins. Goodness You gracious. look up and down, like the outliers here are like Hebron. Mm-hmm. 2018 Palmer went 7-3. and three. And like Kaufman, which was the Division Two champion last mm-hmm. year, went eight and four. Like those are the outliers. Those are the That's bad insane. seasons for finalists. So if you make, in fact, the, the seven on seven finalists overall had an eight eighteen winning percentage. Wow. The next year, eight eighteen, pretty darn good. In fact, you have to go all the way back to twenty fourteen, to twenty fourteen with White House to find a seven on seven finalist. That did not make the playoffs. Okay? 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2021. Mm-hmm. Every single finalist made the playoffs. Okay? So, I'm pretty comfortable saying that history suggests that whoever is playing in the championship games on Friday and on Saturday, we're going to see in the playoffs at least. And right. chances are, they could be flirting with a 10-win season. Well, and I think that's the thing that every single coach that is out there, because there are some head coach, head football coaches that don't even really like 7-on-7 seven seven that much. But the thing that the reason that they do it is it builds chemistry within the team. Mm-hmm. Like, that's an opportunity for all your guys to be out there on the same field getting reps in. And it's not even just getting reps in, but it's doing it in a competitive manner, mm-hmm. which I think helps a ton that's underratedly because you can go out there and practice and throw all you want but when you add a little bit of competition into it that's when you see results Uh, you're spot on coaches like to see their guys compete Mm -hmm. they like to see their guys out there working together working as a team working as a unit and going against a common opponent well yeah and even when you go like if you make the trip down to state wherever you're driving from that's just even and you're staying in a hotel like that's just Mm -hmm. even more team bonding that goes way further than that and it's it's more relaxed obviously when you get on a bus to go to an away game it's pretty strict like this gives them time to kind of be kids too which Mm -hmm. i think helps a lot so i've got another note for you okay okay so what i did i went back to last year's tournament the 2021 state seven on seven tournament okay i was there Okay. I went and I looked at the qualifiers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because what we did, what we did in that first part was we took the teams that made the finalists, the finalists, and we spun that forward. And we said, okay, what does it mean? I want to work backwards now. So I took the 40 UIL state semifinalists from this past year. So they won their region. Okay. Okay. 10 divisions, 10 UIL 11 man state championships, Mm -hmm. uh, because there were no six man teams there. So I don't want to, you know, dilute the, the sample. 40 state semifinalists from last year. Okay, in the, in December, teams that were playing in December uh, for a chance to play at AT and T Stadium. Okay, mm-hmm. those forty teams. Of those forty teams, eighteen of them were in College Station last year. Wow, eighteen of the twenty-two: Albany, Austin LBJ, Austin Westlake, Salina, China Spring, College Station, Quero, Denton, Guyer, Fall City, Franklin, Gunner, Holly, Lake Travis, Lorena, South Lake Carroll, Stratford, Tyler Chapel Hill, Wascom. All were in wow. at the state seven on seven tournament last year. Now you're probably thinking, okay, well that's 22 that weren't there, and that is true. But as you mentioned, there's some programs that don't they they either don't play seven on seven outright, mm-hmm. or they don't play they play in a different league that's not in the they're not trying to qualify for state. Right. 
Uh, for example, Galena Park North Shore is an example. Galena Park North Shore has never qualified for state seven on seven tournament. And you're probably thinking, that's crazy. Yeah, how? Like, how? <laughs> Literally they're, how? They're one of the best programs in the state. The reason is that they are they they play seven on seven, but they just basically play it to get better. Yep. They don't they don't uh, they don't qual they play in state qualifying tournaments. They don't they're that's not a priority for them. Mm -hmm. There's other programs, for example, a state semifinals from a year ago was Lubbock Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Lubbock Roosevelt doesn't really have a reason to do seven on seven because their offense is so like run heavy mm -hmm. and there's no reason to go out there and do the and, and well that's and like you said franklin them. i mean they run the yeah. slot they ran the slot team in the state championship game you know right right and so, <laughs> so but, but that's an example gunner and franklin Clint, are mm -hmm. they do participate yeah and they're the pr pretty the slot darn team. good at it and so in a lot of ways I look at this, and that that is pretty striking to me. That uh, that almost half of the state semifinals from a year ago were in the 128 team field in in at seven on seven, seven on, last yep. year. So what does this mean overall? I'm not here to tell you that every team that's going to be in, in College Station this weekend that we're going to see is going to have some incredible year. Right. I don't think that's the case. I don't think there's any guarantees here, mm -mm. but. I do think it that can't there hurt. is <laughs> something to be said that being good at seven on seven and being good at 11 man football in the fall have some sort of correlation mm -hmm. that there is a correlation between them. And I think that the, the data kind of uh, bears that out. So there it is. I've got a piece up on texasfootball.com. Does seven on seven success predict Texas high school football championships? You can find it at texasfootball.com. And that is math Tuesday. Math Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.